David Brewster here with a new episode of Scales and Tales, and this is Investigating Ionian. And this episode is going to wrap this recent look at the modes from the major scale that I've put together in the recent months. And it's going to definitely attack Ionian, but we're also going to have this review overview of modes and what they are, where you can find them, how you can use them. And there's a lot, you know, hiding in this episode for sure. So if you had questions about, you know, what we've covered so far in the other episodes, or questions about modes itself, or questions about the Ionian, you know, major scale, this episode's totally for you. Okay, to get started here, this entire episode is going to revolve around C Ionian, or the C major scale. And there's actually a song I'm going to recommend at the end of this episode that happens to be in C Ionian. Um, but I'm glad that we lock in to this, you know, tonality or this key, because typically, you know, in music theory classes or in books, the modes are broken down, you know, in the key of C major. It's really easy to see. There's no sharps or flats. You know, it's really streamlined, pretty easy to see. So just as a reminder here, with modes, it's the emphasis we're putting on different notes within that scale. So over a C major 7 chord or C major, if we play C Ionian over that, it's going to sound like C Ionian or the major scale. Because we're emphasizing that C, right? We're calling that the root. And we're playing it over the appropriate chord. Now if we change to the second note in the scale and we start calling D the root and we start playing over a D minor or D minor 7 chord, now we're emphasizing a different chord, you know, we're emphasizing a different note, D. And now that exact same scale is magically going to sound like Dorian now. You know, over that D chord. Same thing with E. Emphasize E, play over an E minor 7 chord, or E minor, and now it's going to sound like E Phrygian. Right? And so on. F is going to sound like Lydian. You know, over an F, you know, major 7 chord. G, over a G7 chord, and it's going to sound like G Mixolydian. B minor 7 flat 5, and it's going to sound like B Locrian. Right? And then we're back to C again for C major or C Ionian. So it's all the emphasis, you know, what we're calling the root. Is it C? Is it D? Is it E? Is it F? G? Is it A? B? We're back to C again. We emphasize a different note in that scale, it changes the sound and tonality. You know, if we just played everything over a C major 7 chord, then everything would just sound like C Ionian. But it's that secret chord underneath. That's the big secret about modes. So many players are so focused on the scale, which the scale itself is very important, but the overlooked area with modal tonalities and playing is the chords and chord progression. That's going to dictate everything. Because, like I said, if you played all that over C major 7, it just sounds like C major. It's when you change that chord, and you're changing that tonality, you're shifting the scale into another place. So then suddenly, you know, Ionian changes the Dorian. Or Phrygian, or, you know, whatever, you know. You know, whatever mode you need. Wherever that emphasis and that chord is moving, that definitely dictates what mode you're playing and the tonality and sound that you're producing. So to really help drive this point home as far as the chord dictating everything as far as modes are concerned, this next example, this blew my mind the first time I ever saw this demonstrated. And I've shared it with a lot of students over the years and blew their minds with it too. So if you haven't seen this before, prepare yourself. You might get your mind blown right here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to loop a C major scale using the MXR clone looper. I'm just going to do this. C major, and that's going to remain the same. Nothing is going to change as far as that scale. But what is going to change is the chord I'm playing behind that scale. And as I start moving through these seven different chords, you're going to hear seven different flavors of that major scale. But it's not going to be the major scale. It's going to change from Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, right before your eyes, like this. So here's the scale. And then here's 
there's C major 7 on top, or underneath, right? There's the major scale, Ionia. showing you like how important those chords are because as soon as I change from C major 7 to D minor 7 even though it wasn't like night and day different but you should hear like the flavor changed ever so slightly because suddenly you know it was played over D scale changes. It's no longer Ionian, you know, when you move away from C major or C major 7. It becomes one of the modes, magically, as soon as that chord changes. So to supply you with some Ionian flavored chords, which really is just major 7th chords, and we're in the key of C, so C major 7 is what we're looking for here, and there's tons of C major 7 chords all over the guitar. Uh, let's start way down here. In that kind of dreamy, you know, open position, you know, C major 7 right there. Just think of a cowboy C major, but take your index finger off. You know, play that open B string right there. You know, C major 7. There's a stock, you know, bar chord C major 7 like that. You know, very common. We could also lift, you know, the, the high E open right there and double it on top. Like that. You could also take your pinky off right there, play the open B like that. Now you're doubling the B string. With the open B string. Right there. So there's C major 7. You could actually just play a C power chord, like a C5, and then play all the open strings above it. And that's also C major 7 right there. And there's tons of voicings for this. Let's try uh, this one. You know, if you like all those open strings, there's a nice one right there. We've got C, E, and that B note, and then the open G, B, and high E up on top. Like that. There's another uh, interesting way to uh, voice this. We could put a B way up on top right there, which is the major 7. Like that. That's a cool voicing. Uh, and like that stock voicing we had here. There's another one right there, really common in jazz, for sure. And that's usually how you'll see it played like that. You could also bar it like this. But then you could also do, and those are both C major 7 right there. But we could do a cross bar C major 7, and we could use this shape. But then your index finger is actually going to do what's known as a cross bar. So you're grabbing C on the low E string on the 8th fret. And then you're crossing over and grabbing B on the seventh fret on the high E, way up there. Like that. That's real tasty. Definitely a jazzy, you know, chord secret right there, those crossbars. That's really cool. Um, let's see, some other flavors here. We could actually do like the power chord kind of shapes we had. Um, we could do it like this. There's a ton of different ways of playing this chord. 
Uh, you could do this kind of typical fingering like that, where they're all lined up in a row. And there's C major 7. You could wrap your thumb around, grab the root right there. There's a big C major 7 like that. like Steve Vai, you know, Vai tapped into, uh, you know, in songs like Sisters and Damn Good, tapped into fretting notes with harmonics, and you could play and imply a C major 7 like this. And right there I'm just grabbing a C root note, you know, fretted, and then three harmonics there on the G, B, and high E. And that's an implied, you know, C major 7 chord right there. Next up, we're going to talk about the seven positions of the major scale. And just as a reminder, there are seven notes in the major scale. That means there are seven different fingerings or scale, you know, uh, patterns. And, you know, if you compare that to the pentatonic, there's five notes in the pentatonic scale. There's five different pentatonic, you know, scale shapes. There's seven notes in the major scale. That means there's seven different major scale shapes. So the first one, you know, for C major right here, we've already looked at that one. I'm just going to basically flesh these out little one octave, you know, fingerings. But there's C major or C Ionian right here. Right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The same scale, but starting on D right here, and we can find another fingering like this. You know, and that's still C major if we're calling C the root change to a D root, that's going to sound like D Dorian right there. That's also a very common Dorian fingering right there. You could do it, you know, with your third and pinky like that, or your, uh, you know, middle and uh, third right there. You know, however you want to finger that, go to the next note E, lock into C major, but start on E, and you'll find this fingering. But starting on E and emphasizing E, it sounds like E Phrygian right there. Next up, you know, F. Now if we start, you know, uh, on F and play the C major scale, it's going to sound like F Lydian right here. That's a really common Lydian fingering right there. Lydian, there's a really common fingering right here. Next up's A. Play C major starting on A, and you'll uncover this fingering. You know, really common Aeolian fingering right there for A Aeolian. Next up's B. Play that over at B minor 7 flat 5. You know, play C major starting on B right there, and it sounds like B Locrian. And then finally, we're back at C right there for C Ionian once again. You know, an octave higher. So, really, what I did there is I basically uncovered C major, you know, little one octave pockets, but there's C major, and this is technically still C major. Until we declare, it's not until we declare D as the root, that's when it changes the Dorian. The same thing with E, when E is the root, that little pocket of notes is going to sound like Phrygian. Over C major, that's just going to sound like C major, right? But over that E, it sounds like Phrygian. Lydian, G Mixolydian, A Aeolian, B Locrian, and uh, C Ionian again. So that's really eye opening because you're learning the seven different fingerings for C Ionian, but you're also learning seven of the most common fingerings for modal scales. Okay, next up we're going to group the modes into modal families. So there are seven modes, you know, from the major scale, counting the major scale itself. And, you know, basically if we group them in different tonality families, you know, you have three major family modes, three minor family modes, and then one mode that's half diminished. So for the major family modes, that's Ionian, Lydian, and Mixolydian. We're going to hit those first. So if you're playing over some sort of C major 7 chord, we're going to use this little pocket right here. Right? There's C Ionian or C major. Now if we 
change that to Lydian, we only have to change one note. We're just gonna raise the fourth. So here's, you know, C major, C Ionian. If we raise the fourth, it's this F to F sharp right there. That's gonna give us, you know, kind of a Lydian tonality. So here's C Ionian again, and then C Mixolydian, you know, is played over a C7 chord. Right? And then right there, the only difference between, the only difference between Ionian and Mixolydian is the seventh. You know, Mixolydian has a flat seventh, that B flat and everything else is the same. But that's usually what you hear in Mixolydian. Right, that flat seven, B flat. The minor family of modes from the major scale, we have Dorian, Phrygian, and Aeolian, and Aeolian's also the natural minor scale. So in C, in the key of C, uh, and we're doing this parallel view here. You know, I was changing Ionian to Lydian to Mixolydian all in the key of C a moment ago. C Ionian, C Lydian, and C Mixolydian. So we're gonna do the same thing, but now in minor land. So, you know, over some sort of C minor seven or C minor chord, you know, if we modify the C major scale to, to uh, Dorian, which is the first, the, the minor family here, uh, we're going to change the third and the seventh. So, you know, Dorian has a flat third and a flat seven when you compare it to the major scale, like this. Everything else is the same, but, you know, you got the flat three right there and the flat seven right there. flat nine chord or maybe a riff that you know kind of targets the, the flat nine or that minor second you know, that kind of thing um, there's a lot of different ways you could play with that but right there we're gonna you know basically create Phrygian so if we compare you know, the major scale to what happens when you change it to Phrygian you got a flat two a flat three a flat six and a flat seven so there's four notes different between the major you know, scale Ionian and Phrygian. And there's C Phrygian right there. And then finally the main, or I'm sorry, the minor scale, Aeolian. Um, you know, C Aeolian, or C natural minor. Now we're gonna have, you know, compared to the major scale, you know, for C Ionian, or C Aeolian rather, we've got a flat three, flat six and a flat seven right there. And then finally Locrian, the weirdo, you know, you know, minus seven flat five tonality right there. So uh, compared to the major scale, everything's flat except for the fourth. So the C major right here, and then C Locrian, we've got, you know, root flat two flat flat 5, flat 6, flat 7. So definitely Locrian's an oddball you know, tonality or mode because everything is you know altered or modified compared to the major scale except for that fourth. So we've had this for that bright and happy major scale and then changing it to Locrian you know, definitely had a big facelift right there. Definitely a really good way to practice modes. You know, once you get used to the basics and you start kind of seeing some of the chords and some songs and stuff and you're hearing it, then actually getting, you know, getting your hands dirty and sitting there and really sweating it out, you know, major to Lydian to Mixolydian, Dorian, Phrygian, you know, Aeolian, and Locrian. Sit there 
there and look at the different, you know, tonalities and changes and the notes that are altered, you know, between those different uh, modes and scales. As far as the song recommendation I'm going to suggest here for Ionian, it's Bristol Shore from Eric Johnson from his album Tones, and I'm a huge Eric Johnson fan. I absolutely love Eric. He's been a huge inspiration, you know, for me since I was in high school, technically. And his chords, you know, his, of course his soloing, his tone, phrasing, the way he moves around the fretboard, I mean, there's so much you get, you know, if you study Eric Johnson's music. But Bristol Shore is basically in C Ionian, and it has this really interesting chord progression, too where really it's just the root note changing, but we're doing something like this. You hear that? Right? Like over that progression. So that first chord, uh, you could think of this a couple different ways. Think of, as far as what we're fretting physically, think of like a D sus2, right? Like that. But don't play the open D string. Keep everything else the same and then, you know, throw that C down right there. And that's basically a C6-9 if you play the A, G, B, and high E open like that. So there's the first chord, C6-9, which is part of the major, you know, family. Right? Keep everything on top the same, but change the root note to G right there. And now it's a G6 sus2. A root note, and now it's an A sus4, like that. And then you loop that three chord progression like this. It's a classic uh, song, too, and definitely it's, it's worthwhile to listen to a song, like, in a master's hands. And Eric Johnson's literally a master. You can definitely hear, you know, Ionian action in Bristol Shore. Of course, this historic, you know, landmark Cliffs of Dover is also in a major tonality. That's G major, or G Ionian for Cliffs of Dover. But check out Bristol Shore. Definitely an overlooked, you know, Eric Johnson gem. And Tones, the album, is exceptional. That's a brilliant album. It's going to wrap this episode of Scales and Tales with investigating Ionian and this kind of overview of modal scales and where you can find them, how you can use them, and chords and different things, you know, influencing the sounds of these scales, bringing out these tonalities. And that was the big eye-opening thing for me, because for years and years and years, I was so focused on the scales, and I never really could understand. It's like, man, this just feels like that major scale that I already learned. And then I'd start playing around with another shape. And it's like, man, this Phrygian thing feels like a major scale. And I was confused. And it wasn't until somebody, you know, took me and said, hey, check out the chords. You're missing, like, the important part right here. You know, check out the chord. Because I was ignoring the chords. I thought, well, that's going to come later. I need to really investigate the scale. Not realizing the chord was literally dictating what I was practicing. And as soon as I started to notice those chords and what it did to the scale I was playing, then I dove into that and I thought, oh, wow. I think I picked out like a Frank Gambale lesson that was an old guitar player and he was talking about chords, you know, and modal progressions and stuff. That blew my mind. I mean, I was a teenager back then, but that blew my mind. And it wasn't until I went to Atlanta to AIM and that's when I could actually ask questions like, hey, am I thinking of this right or playing this right or is this right or wrong or whatever? And it was so helpful to have somebody that actually knew what I was asking or what I was talking about. And they could tell me, like, yeah, do that, but don't do this, you know, or stop doing that or whatever they you know, were telling me. And that's really helpful to have somebody kind of guide you or help you along with this, which is what I'm attempting to do here with these lessons and videos. But it's hard. I, I did try to put some, uh, you know, segments in this episode from some of the questions and feedback I got from the previous episodes, because there was some confusion out there. And I'm not trying to confuse anybody. I'm trying to help you understand what this stuff is and how you can use it, because it's definitely eye-opening. It opens up like a whole new world of music and tonality and sounds. And if you're kind of getting bored with just regular major and minor, then modal flavors and modal tonalities, you know, modal songs is where it's at. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.